Today, I'm going to show you how to create and organize your sketch symbols. I'll also show you some tips and tricks to improve your UI process. Let's get started. So starting off, I'm opening up a project that I am currently working on. It's a voice recorder app that allows users to make a recording and then share it out. Currently, I have this new recording button in the UI. However, I know I'm going to want to expand the feature set of this product and include other kinds of actions that I would want the user to take. So at the moment, I only have this one primary button and it's used currently on three of the four UI screens. I'm going to want to create this button into a symbol so I know it is consistent throughout the whole project and also create different instances of this button. So if I go to where this button currently is, it is on this list page. It is a rectangle with a curve radius and a text layer on top of it. I'm going to take these two layers together and group them by clicking Command G. Some default name now appears called Group 2, which I would replace by double clicking and writing Button. Now that I have this element as one complete group, I would want to make it into a symbol so that I can reuse it throughout the UI. So I go up into this corner and click on this button called Create Symbol. When I do, the name of the group automatically fills in as the name of the symbol, so I will say OK. So now if I click on this button, it will bring me to the Symbols page where that button lives. So now if I return to the instance, it shows me exactly where this element is used. Now to ensure consistency, I want to make sure that that same element is used throughout the UI. I will delete these and replace it with the symbol. So now that same button is used throughout the UI. So if I were to go into it and make a modification to it, such as changing its color, I could return back and see that it is used throughout the UI. I don't actually want that change, so I'll go back and revert to the original design. So now that I have this button as a symbol, I'm going to want to create other symbols of different states. So we would need an inactive state and a secondary button state. So I'm going to take this symbol, click Command C, Command V to duplicate it. Now I have a second button, which I will make some modifications to. So if this was disabled, I would want to change the fill so that it is at a lower opacity. And then if I want to create a ghost button instance of this, maybe I would change the fill and the border. So I would include a border of the primary color. So I'll take that fill, add it as a document color, and then assign that border to that color. Remove the fill, increase the thickness of the button, and invert the color of the type. So now I have three separate kinds of instances of this button. However, they all have the same exact symbol name. So if I go back to my UI design and wanted to swap it out, I could click here and then see all three buttons, but they're all labeled the exact same thing. So for organizational purposes, it really helps to come up with a naming convention and stick through it throughout your whole UI design system. So I'm going to go back into my symbols page and rename some of these. Even the initial button that we came up with, just having the name button isn't very useful because when we want to expand it and come up with smaller buttons, larger buttons and different styles, it'll be difficult to manage. So I might call this button slash large slash active to indicate this is a large button size with a status of active. This disabled button I might rename to large inactive to indicate that is the large inactive button. And this third button style I might change to button large secondary to indicate that it is the secondary button style that I can use throughout the UI. Now when I include these slashes in the name, it automatically creates a file structure within Sketch. So if I go to insert and then document, now all the buttons live under the button large name and I can then select which type of button I would like. Do I want a primary active, a primary inactive, or a secondary button style? 
So if I go back into my UI, now I can easily swap this style out with any other style that I would like. So I can go to this active and then say inactive. It now has the inactive treatment. If I were then to choose the secondary style, it now has the secondary treatment style. So I have this new secondary button that now I'm using in my UI, but perhaps I don't want it to say new recording. Perhaps I want to say something else. So if I wanted it to say share, let's say, I could go to the override panel and write the word share. We notice a problem instantly with this update. It does not follow the alignment behavior that I would like. It appears as though it is pinned to the left side of the button. So I would want to go back into the symbol and make a modification to ensure that whatever text I put in that button remains centered and aligned properly. So I can double click into it and now I'm in the symbols page and I'm modifying that secondary button style. I can select that text layer and I notice that it is a left aligned text layer. So instead I'm going to make it center aligned. So by making the text center aligned, I can put in whatever text and I know that it will automatically adjust to the center of the button. But to ensure that, I will also select the alignment in the center to verify that the text is always aligned in the center of the button. So now when I return back to the instance, share is now in the center of the button. I'm going to want to make this modification for all of the different button layers. So I'm going to make sure they are all centered aligned text. Now imagine as you're working through this project, you realize that you don't only want large button styles throughout, but you might also want some smaller alternative button styles. So imagine if I wanted to have two buttons side by side next to each other in the UI. Something along the lines of this, where I have two buttons, a primary button and a secondary button. So I'm going to make one of them into a primary button and have the other one as a secondary. Now, because we had that text aligned in the center of the screen, it always remains in the center of the symbol, which works very well. The last thing I'm going to show you is some little problems that come up when you replace a larger symbol with a much smaller symbol. So I'm going to actually go to the side and take this play button. Currently, I have this icon slash play, but I'm going to make it into a symbol by clicking create symbol and now it will be sent to the symbols page. So if I jump into this symbol, it is of a width of 50 by 50. And so if I return to the instance and just replace this one symbol, we will see what happens. It stretches it out and it looks very odd. Why did that happen? It happened because this symbol is currently a width of 160 and a height of 50. It is stretching the symbol to allocate that space. So if I jump into the symbol, I'm going to want to make modifications to ensure that that symbol retains its correct properties. This icon is essentially a larger pink circle filled with a black circle on top of it and then a triangle on top of that. The native property of a symbol is to fill up the space allocated for it. So it will automatically stretch and pull according to the resizing of it. We saw that with the share button as well. As I stretched it out, it retained that center relationship. With this one, if I stretch and pull, it will automatically warp and fill that space. I'm going to want to fix some properties about it. So wherever I place it into the screen, it will automatically adjust and retain its correct aspect ratio. So first I'm going to grab that larger circle and set it to a fixed width and a fixed height. So that way that oval will not adjust depending on the size of the symbol. With the smaller oval on top of it, again, I'm going to fix the width and fix the height. And I'm also going to take that triangle and fix the width and fix the height as well. So by going to the resizing properties, I'm able to adjust the size and dimension of certain elements of the icon. So if I return back to the instance, I see that the circle shape retains its correct ratio and the triangle retains its correct size as well. But we notice some slight misalignment issues here that we're going to want to adjust. So again, I'm going to click back into the actual symbol of this and correct its adjustment. So how I'm going to ensure that this retains its correct ratio is by going to the resizing panel again 
and pinning the circle to the left edge and pinning the bigger circle to the left edge. Now everything is pinned to the left side of the screen. The way that this works is a little bit interesting because the triangle is actually not completely centered aligned in the icon. It has more padding on the left side than it does on the right side. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to put it in a group and I'm going to call it triangle. Now the thing with this triangle is that because it is not completely centered within the circle, it is creating that weird adjustment when we replace it with a larger symbol in the actual UI. So I'm going to do a little trick where I will place a rectangle in the screen and have that in the center and have this element in that triangle group. So I'm adding a gray rectangle to the center of the button so that way the triangle can then become aligned to that rectangle which is perfectly centered aligned. So I have this gray rectangle and I have the triangle play button and then I put them in a, another group called center. The reason why I put it in a separate group called center is because I want the triangle to become aligned to the rectangle and then the rectangle will be aligned to the rest of the icon. So it can be a little bit confusing getting all of this alignment correct and sometimes it just takes a little while to play around with the elements and see what works out. But essentially I'm going to take this triangle and make it pinned to the left corner of the rectangle that we have added. So if I now return to the instance, I see that the triangle now is aligned with that rectangle, which is aligned in the center of the entire width. I don't actually want this rectangle to be visible, so I will make sure that the fill of this correctly matches that background layer. And if I return to the instance, it now fills up the space correctly and looks right. I can increase or decrease the size of this and it does not matter about the width or the height of this symbol, it will always be the correct aspect ratio. So I hope you enjoyed this video going over how to create and modify symbols in Sketch. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.